Hey guys, so I'm going to um, show you all uh, what is uh, needed for setting up breakfast. First thing you got to do is put on some gloves, and those gloves are over here, so bear with me while I put some on. Just a moment. Okay, so the gloves are on. Pretty much what you need to do is you have to really figure out what is going to be best uh, to conserve time because if you're slow and really don't know what you're doing this could take up to two hours uh, which we're hoping doesn't happen I just want to give you a good view of the kitchen area and I'll also give you a view of the setup area uh, where we set up most of our breakfast now that I have my gloves on uh, what I do is I come out here and I turn everything on, uh, starting with these bur or these hot plates. I don't know. Um, they keep the food hot. Uh, so as you can see, this little light here, this will be lit up if the burner itself is turned on. So since it's not, we're going to come underneath and see that power strip there. We're just going to flip that on, come up top, make sure it's on. I usually like to set these up to around three so that way they're nice and hot. This one here is a little different uh, because there are always product uh, underneath that is usually in the way of the power strip. So we're going to pull those out and go ahead and set these up where they need to be. Um, on the little stand here so we'll set these up you can do pepper first or salt first either way you want to set it uh, I don't think it really matters uh, as you can tell we have uh, a space for more usually what we do down here is we'll do a ketchup and then uh, a hot sauce and a salsa and those are going to be next door to where we found the pepper and salt. So we've got the ketchup and the Tabasco. Uh, there is no salsa. I don't know what happened to that. I don't see any down there. So we're just going to grab one of these plates here. Sorry. And then set it on top of the little plate and scoot it over so that way it's not just sitting on a bare counter. Okay, you'll have to excuse me, I'm getting sick here. So we'll go down here. This one's a little bit of a reach. Uh, so we'll get down under and hit that power strip. Make sure that these are on. This one's a little hidden. As you can tell, it's kind of that lights under there, but you can see that it's on. So we'll turn. The bottom one, I'm not really sure that we need to turn it on. I just do it because uh, for me, it adds extra heat going up. I'm not sure if it does or doesn't, but I'm strange that way. Either way, next I come on over to the waffle station, which is the station here, and I will grab one of these smaller plates. Set it down here, grab one of these cups, set it upside down on top of that plate. Then we'll grab, in fact, we'll grab just a couple of these. We're going to set one of these larger plates down next to this first waffle maker. We'll grab another small plate here. We're going to set that down right above it. Okay. So um, usually what goes here is when I bring out the utensils, there will be two fork-like uh, utensils that are crisscross. And then on top here, what we put are these little guys. So those are the sprays that we use on the waffle makers. Those are gonna be usually in the uh, counter that is second to the last. So we'll go ahead and grab these, and let's 
set them on top. Just like that, face them forward so they're nice and pretty so people can see what it is that they are. So over here on the waffle maker on the left hand side we have a little switch. We'll go ahead and turn that switch on which turns on the waffle maker and we will lift the, the lid. Looks like there's a little bit of waffle left on this one. So we'll just pull that out for a second. And I'll go ahead and toss those in the trash. Okay, so go ahead and come down here. And again, there's that little switch on the left side here. And then we'll lift. And then we'll come over to the third one, switch, and lift. Perfect. Right next to the waffle makers, we have these two stands here. What I like to do is I like to separate them about yay wide because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, oh, this plate that I left here on the counter, we're going to add another one of these smaller plates. Bring those over here to the two stands. I'm going to set the large plate down there and the smaller plate on top. Okay, because what we have down in the cupboard underneath is we have the sugar-free Smucker's syrup that we use for the uh, people who need sugar-free syrup on the waffles. And we also have the honey that we put up top. So the honey on top, sugar-free syrup down here on the bottom. Uh, what's going to go here is the strawberry compote that we use for uh, topping the waffles. And then there will be uh, uh, maple syrup here, maple syrup here. The uh, pour over caramel goes here and the chocolate sauce, the uh, Hershey's chocolate uh, goes there. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then we'll come over to this side. Uh, as you can see where we left off with these guys. And we're gonna come down here and see if, oh no, we've already checked that one. We're gonna come down to the next one over here. And we've got some goodies down here that we need to pick up. So we have our peanut butter here, which goes onto this stand there. Uh, you can do it any way you like. Uh, usually I do the peanut butter there, the jelly here, and I'll grab a plate, set it down at the bottom, because when we bring out the cold stuff, we're gonna do butter here and Philadelphia cream cheese here. So that way, you know, uh, people have choices for um, their bagels or whatever it may be, toast. And we bring this out here and just flip that over like that. So that way you have that sitting there. Now also keep in mind if these don't look full to you or if you think they could use a little bit more product, feel free. That will be also in the cupboard down here. Uh, there we don't usually keep anything other than plates. And this is the egg station. So this egg station we really don't have to do anything right now to prepare but we will at a certain point. This is the oatmeal station. Now this oatmeal, I, uh, oatmeal warmer rather, I usually pull forward a little bit. Now on the back of this, on the left hand side, there's a little switch. You flip that switch opposite of what it is now. And that's what turns on the oatmeal heater. It gets hot. For the oatmeal. This is our milk and yogurt station. This will be filled up uh, when we bring out all of the cold goodies. Uh, back over here where we left off at the waffle station, uh, there's the peanut butter and the honey. We come over, there's a nice little 
area for forks and knives. And then over here, what we'll put is our oranges. And on top here, we have a plate of mixed uh, cut fruit in the refrigerator that we'll bring out and set on top of here. Uh, next to that, uh, over on this corner here, we'll put, uh, we have apples and oranges on a little stand. We'll bring that out here. And when we have bananas, uh, we'll put a plate here and a plate here and fill those two plates with bananas. But uh, unfortunately, I don't think we have bananas today. I haven't checked. Uh, before we go back into the kitchen, I want to also show you the juice machine here. You just open it up. Oops, me. Open it up. You'll see these two switches there. You're going to turn these on. And that allows us to pour the juice. And there's the water. So let's check this out, see if, no, we do not have any bananas. Usually we keep the bananas down here where you see the raisins and brown sugar. Uh, you'll see a box of bananas. You just grab them by the bunch and set them on those plates that I was showing you just a minute ago. So I'm going to put you on pause for just a moment because I'm going to get this cart and set it up for the cold stuff. So bear with me. Okay, so I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to be speeding this up just a little bit. I'm spending a lot of time uh, explaining things. I'm sure you pretty much already know uh, what everything is and kind of sort of how it goes. But uh, I was talking about time management, so make sure that your coffee is ready to go around this time. So you've gone out and you've turned everything on. See, I've already uh, set up the coffee uh, for ready, you know ready to go and we'll go ahead and run this and that's the brew button on top we're making a large pot of it and the brew button on top and we'll just let those run and what that happens what that does is it just puts the coffee into these nice little things there all right so we're gonna come over here to the fridge and this fridge is pretty much what holds everything that is cold, obviously, that you need to put out. And um, so most of this stuff is kept in here. You've got the Hershey's chocolate, the whipped cream, the caramel. You've got the syrup, uh, butter, and Philadelphia cream cheese. You have the strawberry compote, um, and you've got that nice big plate of fruit that I was talking about earlier. You've got your milk and usually uh, right behind that milk back there you will have the yogurt which we seem to be out of right now so we won't be putting yogurt out. This is salsa that we use for uh, you know eggs and whatnot. Uh, we'll put this over by the egg station. Uh, these are our hard boiled eggs. We will set these up in the egg station. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and put you on pause while I set up the cart with all of this goody stuff. Bear with me. Okay, so what we have here is the fruit and eggs down on the second level. We've got the salsa uh, and the butter. Um, we've got the cream cheese. That doesn't go there. That goes here. Cream cheese, caramel, uh, syrup, chocolate sauce. Uh, milk and the strawberry combo. Uh, try to fit it on as well as possible because what we're doing is we're going to come down to that area down there. You see I've went ahead and pulled these out because I need to put those in the ice before I set them out. So uh, we're going to come in here to this fridge area. Just a second there. Pop that open just like that. And we've got all these other goodies up here. We got the sweets and we got the bagels and stuff. We got the bread. We got the uh, oranges and the apples and oranges in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and set all this stuff up in just a moment.
Okay, so adding on to the cart, I did the uh, oranges on top and I did the breads on the bottom. Uh, and by hand, I'll be carrying the apples and oranges. So we've got this all set up and ready to go. Let me move it out of the way. And we're going to close this. Very good. Now, uh, I can't do all of this with one hand, so I'm going to put you on pause. Just a minute. Okay, so like I had mentioned before, we're going to set the apples and oranges down here on the corner of this station here. And we're going to grab the oranges. And we're going to set these over here. Make sure they're facing outward and in. Or, you know what I mean. Kind of... Uh, Make it look nice and pretty. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring the milk and set it into this little nice cold fridge. So we'll do that there. And then do our best to make the yogurt look nice. Okay. Uh, and then we'll come over here. Now that tray of uh, fruit takes two hands, so switch on here. So that is what the fruit station is going to look like uh, prior to the utensils that we will set down here. Uh, oranges, mixed fruit, and apples and oranges. Plates on both sides. You get the point. Now over here we're going to bring the eggs and set them here because what we do is we put ice in here to keep these eggs cool. So we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, over here we're going to go ahead and set up this area here. Bring the compote. And then do the syrup. One there and one there. Make it so that it's easy for people to grab the handles. There and there. And then we'll grab the caramel. Set one there, set one there. And then the chocolate. One there. And one there, on the very top there, behind the chocolate, we're going to set a nice little bowl of butter. So then we've got left the Philadelphia cream cheese and another butter. Cream cheese will go here. Now again, you can set it up as you like. Uh, this is just how I do it butter on top. So you, on the bread station, right next to the toaster, you have your butter, peanut butter, jelly, and cream cheese. And then the bread will go there. So, uh, like I said, this we put in the scrambled egg section. This is green salsa. So we'll bring it over here, and we'll set it down right in the center. Set that down in the center, and that's ready to go. See the bread down there on the bottom? So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take these three trays, and we're gonna set them inside this bread box. The holds of the bread. You can see the three levels here, so I'll put you on hold. Okay, so the end product looks like this. Uh, you're gonna do the sweets on top, the bread, white and wheat breads, in the middle and down at the bottom we're going to do our bagels and we'll go ahead and shut these doors here and that will be our bread box there got your plates set up forks and knives and the toasting area so 
So remember, you've got your butter, peanut butter, jelly, and cream cheese. You have your bread over here. And uh, next to that, which is next to these things, you have your salt, your pepper, your um, ketchup, and Tabasco sauce. Usually there's another salsa, salsa packets that we have. Unfortunately, we don't have any right now. Uh, we will put right on the side uh, and just kind of uh, make it look nice. And then down there we have the green uh, salsa that was also in the refrigerator. So as you can see, my cart is now empty. Everything is set. Uh, the only thing I have left is to bring out the batter for the waffles and the utensils. So everything is turned on. You can actually feel the heat coming off of the waffle makers. That tells you that those are on. Uh, and then over here you have your compote, your uh, sugar-free syrup, your regular syrups on either side, your Hershey's chocolate sauce, your caramel sauce, you have your honey up top, and your butter on top of there. So that's, that's how that's set up. And then over here you have your oranges, you have your mixed fruits chopped up, and you've got your uh, apples and oranges mixed uh, in a stand here. So we'll go ahead and gather up the utensils and we will bring those out. Those should be uh, the last portion of the setup other than what we need for ice. So we'll put ice in the water and we'll put ice in the eggs. Uh, not in the eggs, but in this container that holds our hard boiled eggs. So I'll um, put you on pause for just a moment. So this is where you'll find the utensils most of the time. Uh, sometimes uh, people during the day, they like to use our utensils and not put them where we can find them, which makes it difficult for me to set up breakfast. Uh, these pans here tell me that I probably missed something in the waffle maker section. Make sure that all these guys have a pan underneath. They do. Now, always make sure that you pop your head out every once in a while to see if there's anybody at the front desk. That's very important. Uh, okay, so we're going to come back into the kitchen area and we're going to set these up. We'll actually put these on the cart so we can get them to their designated spots. So I'll put you on pause while I do that. Okay, so what we have is here is our plates and these plates we what we do is we place these spoons on top uh, and I will show you how that works once we get to uh, the breakfast stations we have our tongs here our spoons this is our uh, egg spoon this is the forks that we use for the waffle section this is used for the oatmeal and these are used for the uh, for those things down there, that is the uh, raisins and the brown sugar. Now, uh, by the looks of it, it seems that we don't have everything that we need. Uh, we're missing the compote spoon, and I'm not sure if we have enough of these plates, but I will find out soon enough. Uh, so the compote spoon is going to be a smaller spoon uh, than any of these. So if you're missing something, the best thing you can do is find it in one of those drawers. And it's usually always the top drawer here. Uh -huh. Be very careful because there are knives in this drawer. So we're going to search for that spoon. Maybe. There we go. So this is what that compote spoon looks like. Just like that. Okay. So we'll close that drawer up. And we will set that down. Take this out. So I'll put you on pause for just a moment. Okay, so the first place I start is the fruit section. And the fruit section takes two of these plates. 
uh, I like to set them up kind of at an angle here. And then uh, these are two of the tongs. One tong there, one tong here. And that is what that is going to look like. That's how you set up the fruit section. Just like that. Uh, next, I will come over to the egg section. Uh, I kind of have this thing about zigzagging. As you can tell, I totally missed the uh, oatmeal area, but I will come back to that. So, the egg section takes just one of these plates, and then you find the spoon that we use for the eggs, that's what it looks like, and then we'll just set that on top there. It's always good to face uh, the utensils kind of at an angle, uh, and the reason for that is because most of our guests come in through those doors there, and they will walk from this area uh, into our section, or set up here, and so it's just easier for them to be able to walk up and grab whatever utensil they need to serve whatever food they want. So, we'll do that. Uh, now, I'll go ahead and take these two forks here and set them up just like this in the waffle section. And that's, uh, other than the waffle batter, that is pretty much already set. Uh, so we'll come over here to these areas and the first hot plate area takes three, these here. So what I'll do is I'll set them up uh, just like that so that way they kind of look nice a little bit. And two of the slotted spoons for the eggs. That one is for the regular scrambled eggs. Uh, this one is for the ham and eggs, or eggs and cheese, depending on what they make in the morning. And then we'll grab tongs for the sausage. And that's how that will be set up there, okay? Next one is going to be just two, just two of these plates, and we'll set them up just like this. And um, we'll take one slotted spoon and one semi-stretched uh, tongue, and that's going to be for the biscuits. So that's how that's going to be set up there. We don't put anything over on this side because here I put the gravy and that already has a spoon uh, inside of the gravy. So we'll do that. Um, now, this is the bread section. We take the last plate, we'll set it up here with the last tongue so that way they have something to grab the bread with. The last on my list is the utensils for the oatmeal station. Oh, one thing I forgot to tell you. Two of these, sorry, two of these spoons, of these smaller, skinnier spoons, these go in with the salsa. Uh, and usually what I do is, since I don't unwrap the salsa, uh, the breakfast person does that, I'll just set it on top like that and that's how that looks there so we'll come back over here and you know I forgot about the compote also so this is the compote spoon remember how that one looked just like that we'll come over here we do not unwrap the compote we'll just set the spoon on top and leave that there so that's how that works uh, these, oh, you know what look at there I did have a compote spoon I just didn't see it. I guess I'm going blind. Two glasses. Okay. So we'll set that aside and put that back in the drawer. And then we'll put the rest of these. So you can tell these still have that in them. So we'll just shake them off a little bit. There we go. 
I'm going to set these down right here. And this guy there. And we are going to set up the raisins and brown sugar. So remember that was down underneath here. So what I do is I'll put the cart there. Let me go ahead and set this back in this upper drawer here. There's that. And we'll come down here and grab these one at a time because that is glass. And if you drop them, they will break. And that is not something we want to happen because people get angry. So, the best thing to do with these is you're going to unscrew the top here. You'll unscrew this part here and the lid comes off, pops off, and then you'll screw that part back in. So, uh, since I can't do it with just one hand, I'm gonna put you on pause for just a moment. Okay, so as you can see, I've pulled off the rim. The only thing left is the top. You pull that top off and set it to the side. Next, you'll take the rim, set it back on top, and you're going to uh, screw it back on. And you'll do that with each and every one of these uh, until they're all done. You set the lids to the side. After you're done with the lids, you'll put them underneath there. Uh, for the breakfast person, that's where they always know they are. So, uh, put you on pause while I do that. Okay, so like I said, we'll put the lids down here. And all of the raisins and brown sugar are on the cart like so. And I'll come down here, grab this bag here, and just set it on top of the cart like that. Take the cart out to the oatmeal station. Nice and carefully. And we will set it up. So we're going to move these over just a bit. Bring this down here just like that, right next to the oatmeal. And I like to have it just like that. So do brown sugar. And raisins. Uh, let's do this raisin over here. Now, like I said, you can set it up any way you like. This is just how I do it. Uh, golden raisins there. And some more raisins. Now, that's kind of how it's going to look. You know, brown sugar, raisins, brown sugar. That's how I've always done it. Uh, next, you're going to take these spoons and you're going to place them inside of the cups. So, raisins, brown sugar, golden raisins, these raisins down here, kind of tricky so you have to dig yourself a little hole there, and then these raisins, and last but not least, we've got the brown sugar, okay, and that is how that section is going to look, set up. You've got your raisins, brown sugar, and your oatmeal, which uh, the breakfast person takes care of the oatmeal. We do not. So, uh, next thing on my list, if you remember correctly, the coffee has been brewing this entire time. It's been done uh, a few minutes ago. So what we have to do is move through here. Uh, but before we do that, what I like to do is, I like to grab a towel down here on the bottom. They keep the towels for cleaning or sopping things up if you drop something. And then I will grab the green spray bottle and bring this out to the coffee station. There. Nobody in the lobby? Okay. Everything looks clear, so this is our coffee station here. And everything pretty much looks full, because uh, I did this earlier, just right before I started the audit, came out and uh, filled up the sugars and the teas 
and the hot chocolate. So, what we need to do is take these bad boys into the back and drain them. So I'll put you on pause while I do that. Okay, so I've managed to place all four coffee servers on top of the cart along with their uh, little deals there. Um, the coffee servers don't necessarily fit, so you need to be very, very careful if you decide to do it this way uh, on your way back to the kitchen. So these areas here will need to be wiped down. So what I'll do is I'll pull all of this off the counter and wipe it down. I don't think you need an instruction on that, so I'll put you on pause while I do that very quickly. Okay, so I've got all four of them draining at the moment, uh, just like so. And while they're doing that, I come over here and I'll empty these out and wash them out of any uh, coffee grounds. And I'll get these prepared, or actually I'll probably just carry these out uh, and set those up in the coffee area. Um, so I'm pretty sure you already know how to do coffee and how to refill the coffee. Uh, so I'm going to skip this part uh, and put you on hold until I am uh, ready for our next task, which is ice. So we'll take care of the ice after this. Uh, so I'll put you on hold while I finish up the coffee. Okay, so I've done the coffee and I've placed the ice uh, that I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, in here in the freezer, you've got these blue uh, ice containers. Uh, and these will go where the uh, waffle batter goes. And like I said, you'll find them here in the freezer. Right next to the refrigerator. Where we keep the waffle batter. Now the waffle batter is the one with the spout. That's where we keep the waffle batter. So, uh, we'll put this on the cart and carry that uh, out to the breakfast area, which is hard to do with one hand because I need to make sure that this doesn't topple over and break the entire system. So, I'll put you on pause for just a moment. Okay, so just to verify that I've done the ice, remember the uh, whipped cream takes ice, so we find this bucket here, it's shiny, uh, and we place the whipped cream uh, inside and put the ice uh, around the whipped cream. And that's gonna be in the waffle area. Now remember to always place this uh, plate underneath, um, you know, just for condensation purposes. Uh, and then over here, underneath the eggs, seems like we only have three in there today. Uh, underneath here, I've placed ice in the bowl. So there's that. And then come down here. The water uh, has ice also, and we're going to let that cool. In a moment, you'll see it get nice and frosty. That means that we have cold water. Uh, come back down here to the waffle section. And, uh, you know, I, this is how I had it set up on the cart. So hold on to the batter. Uh, as you're moving the car. So uh, this facing this way, uh, as you can see the back doesn't have that little uh, lid there. Uh, you're going to place that on the inside of this that holds the waffle batter. Put one there, one on top, and then grab the other one. Place that one on the inside, on the other side. Grab the last one here, just on top, just like that. So that way you have one, two, and then one, two. And we'll place this bad boy inside of there. So pause just a moment. So after you've slid the batter into its place, that is what it's going to look like. And we'll take this here and slide that home, and you're all set. So the next thing we've got to do is 
carved with the potatoes and the sausage gravy. So what I'll do is, I'll go ahead and just set this here for now because I'll end up using it uh, for the gravy. I gotta put those uh, catchers back on the coffees there. Uh, so I won't forget to do that. So here, next to the microwave, we have our pots, or I'm sorry, our pans. Uh, this is we, what we use for the gravy and the sausages. We use these for the eggs, the biscuits, and the potatoes. Uh, those are the lids underneath there. Those are the biscuits that we'll be making uh, in just a moment. Uh, over here in these freezer areas, these freezers rather, uh, this one closest to the window, you will find uh, sausage and potatoes. So we'll take the top potato tray and close the door there. Bring it over here. And we'll go ahead and uncover the potatoes here. Now make sure at the beginning of your shift that this is turned on. The way to turn it on is power button here. You can change the temperature by turning it to the right for hotter, to the left for less hot. And this is our timer here. So we're gonna set our timer to 30 minutes because that is how long the potatoes cook. So 30 minutes at 420. Uh, we'll open that up, that's nice and hot because I set that up at the beginning of my shift to make sure that it was ready to go. Uh, and then we'll put the potatoes. I always put it on the second uh, shelf here because to me it, it cooks better on that shelf. I've tried it up top, I've tried it down bottom. That just seems to be the best area for the potatoes to cook. So we'll leave that there. We'll close this up and let that sit for a bit. Then we'll come down here and in order to scoop those potatoes around, I use something that looks similar to this. Oh, here it is. It's this one here. Uh, it's got a rounded back and a flat front. And it uh, makes it easier to, uh, you know, mix the potatoes around, uh, which I tend to do uh, every so often. Over here, next to the coffee machine, you'll find your glove and your uh, anti-burning pot holders. So we'll set that there. Uh, until we're ready to mix up the potatoes. Come back over here and I'll grab one, two, three of these. And I'll set them up here. One, two, and three. So we'll just set those up just like that. Come back over here and grab the one for the gravy. So, we take this little spoon here, which was uh, with the utensils earlier, but I set aside specifically for the gravy. And we'll have it lined up just like so. Now the first two are going to be used for the biscuits. So we'll take, down here, we'll take these uh, butcher type paper, we'll fold it in half and set it inside. Put you on pause while I do that. Okay, so the end product is going to look just like so. I've folded them in half and set it down in the bottom of the pan and that is to keep the biscuits from uh, sticking to the pan. Makes it easier for our guests uh, to pull them out of the pan and put them onto their plates. So we'll do that. Uh, this third one is for the potatoes, and again, this is for the gravy. So I will start getting the gravy ready, 
we use this green bowl. Make sure you do not use that black bowl because that is not microwave safe. This is microwave safe, or there's a red one also that we use uh, that is microwave safe, but that black one is definitely not. Now, I have a thing about cleanliness, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull a couple of these because when I pour the gravy, it tends to like to go everywhere. So I wanna make sure I catch it off the lip of the container first. Uh, before it drips onto any surfaces. So, uh, the way you figure out what the gravy is, now, if you see this here with the, uh, what seems to look like vanilla that has uh, somewhat come to the top of the, of the uh, uh, batter here, this is the waffle batter. So, if you see something that looks like this, this is gonna be your waffle batter. Uh, we're not gonna be using that today. Today we're going to be using the sausage gravy. And this is what the sausage gravy looks like. Uh, you can tell that, you know, you kind of see a little bit of the sausage mixed in with the gravy. So we'll pull that out. Oh, this one's a little heavy for some reason. I don't know. Okay, so we'll pull that out. Set that on top there. And uh, I think what it was was my gloves are a little slippery there okay so uh, this seems to look a little thick most of the time uh, sometime most of the time sometimes the uh, the gravy is not so thick it's a little bit thinner so when we pour it into when we pour it into the bowl it uh, kind of seems a little watery already so we don't add water but considering this is jiggling uh, we'll go ahead and pour some into the bowl and add water to it so uh, put you on pause for just a moment. Okay, so this is what it looks like in the bowl. Uh, as you can tell, it's very, very thick and jiggly. So we'll bring it over here to the hot water where the uh, coffee is. And bear with me just a moment. And we'll add a little bit of hot water to the mix. And I'll put this back up. Now, when you're putting the gravy into the bowl, you'll actually see a line here. That is pretty much the ultimate fill line. So if you bring the gravy just below that line, you'll have just enough to fit into that container. So we'll do that. Now, it looks like we made a little bit of a mess here. We'll clean that up. Okay, move this over. Now come over this side. I will mix the gravy just like so. That is a very thick gravy, but what we're, what we're doing here is we're getting that water mixed into the gravy so it loosens up a little bit and thins it out. Uh, like I said, when you start to heat the gravy in the microwave, the gravy itself starts to thin. And so you really don't need to put a lot of hot water uh, in with the gravy because it's going to thin out anyway. So we'll do that. Kind of looks like oatmeal, doesn't it? I'm sure some of you guys are like, ew, that's gross. Or one of you guys, whoever's watching this thing. Looks about right. Looks like most of that water has been somewhat soaked into the gravy there. Okay. So we'll go ahead and take this. Now this needs more hot water later. Uh, like when I'm done, it's always okay to add hot water if it's too thick at the end of your microwave session. That back in the bowl there, or the uh, pan, and I bring this, put this on top of the cart, and I will park this here, and we're going to run this baby for 15 minutes. So we're going to hit the power button 
and then type in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Hit start. Done. Okay, so those are the biscuits again, like I said. So we're going to check on the potatoes. They look to be doing okay. So what I usually do is I put a mitt on, I pull the potatoes out a little bit, uh, pull the pan out a little bit, and I will mix them up uh, and make sure that the ones on top are getting mixed in with the ones on the bottom. Oops, I just dropped one. Uh, and then, yeah, make sure, <laughs> try not to drop any. Um, and I'll do that. So I'll put you on hold for just a moment. Okay, so uh, since I'm running out of time and my phone battery is dying, what we need to do, the next thing we need to do is take two of these and one of these. I'll go ahead and just take two of these for now. And we place them on that hot plate area. Over here, this is going to be the far right is your potatoes and the center is your biscuits. Over here, we're going to set the gravy. Now, uh, before you bring the food out and set it on top, you're going to place hot water into this pan and uh, just kind of bring it up to that line there where you see it kind of get darker. Just fill it up to that line with hot water. Hot water that you get from the coffee machine. Just want to make sure there's nobody in the lobby very quickly. No, we're good. Okay. So, look, we got cold water. It's nice and frosty now. All right, so we're going to go back. I need to go ahead and bring this one out for the gravy. Set that right there. Everything is good. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the biscuits, We'll go ahead and bring the biscuits out. We'll set them on the counter here. Uh, I don't know why I still have the gravy out. So uh, usually the gravy goes right back into the fridge as soon as you're done pouring it. We'll just set that right back in there. Okay. So this film comes off of the biscuits. And it says that we have 30 minutes left on the potatoes. So when this gets down to about eight or seven minutes, what I'll do is I'll take some of this Pam that we keep up here up top and I spray the biscuits. A nice little layer. Not only makes them Taste buttery. It also keeps them from sticking to each other and the pan. So, that's that. So I'll do that. And then, um, oh, occasionally, so where are we? 10 minutes? Perfect. So what we'll do is we will bring this out. Bear with me just a moment. We'll bring this out along with the gravy pan. And we'll go ahead and mix the gravy. The consistency kind of gets a little bit more watery. Uh, it still needs a lot of warming up to do, so uh, bear with me just a moment while I mix this very well. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and put it back into the microwave and we're just going to hit start and let it continue. So I'll just leave this here because I like putting the bowl up here and mixing it with that. Um, let's see, we still have 30 minutes left, so no need to mix the potatoes. So when the biscuits are done uh, warming up in the oven there, uh, and you'll know when the biscuits are ready because when you poke them, your finger kind of goes through the first, the very top crust layer. Uh, plus, you know, they get darker and um, you can really, really smell how delicious they are uh, when they're almost ready to go. So these two, the reason I have two here is because these biscuits don't all fit into one pan. So I'll fill it up. And I believe it's three biscuits. It's a three, six, nine, twelve biscuits. Three, six, nine, twelve biscuits. Uh, equally twenty-four, obviously. One of these pans I will bring over to this table back here, uh, and I'll pull out the saran wrap and the foil. And first, I will saran wrap the very top layer, of the very top of the biscuits, and then I'll bring it over here and I will foil over because what we do is uh, once this is moved this black uh, drawer looking deal here this is a warmer uh, this is a, a keeper of warm food I guess you can say I'm not, I'm not really sure what the technical name is for this but uh, once you've saran wrapped the uh, pan here and put foil on top you're just going to slide that in there just like that you'll leave it there and uh, the breakfast person will use that as a refill later so that is that now um, all we do is wait for the potatoes to cook and I've just realized the reason why it still says 30 is because I never turned on the timer. <laughs> so by looking at the clock, uh, I've had these in there for nine and a half to ten minutes. So I'll just take that off of the time there. So we'll do ten minutes even. Uh, at 420. So we'll go ahead and... Mix those potatoes again and finish off that gravy, remembering to uh, occasionally pull it out and uh, mix it up. Um, the, the biscuits go here. Don't forget to saran wrap and foil. Uh, this one we'll go ahead and put out uh, over the hot water. Uh, the potatoes in that third one also go out and onto the hot water um, and the gravy goes out uh, with the spoon inside of the pan inside of the gravy because uh, that is how we use it that should be everything uh, as much as I can explain now uh, if you have a better way of managing your time uh, so be it what I've actually done what I've actually started to do is I've started to uh, prepare the coffee prior to uh, coming into the kitchen which has made it a lot faster uh, I've stocked the coffee station and made sure that it was clean and ready to go uh, <clears throat> that that helps with time in preparation so uh, if you have any questions comments or concerns just uh, ask your supervisor or anybody that is um, familiar with setting up breakfast and I'll show you the breakfast area one more time so you can remember exactly how it's set up so starting over here with the uh, fruits we have the apples and oranges the mixed bits of fruit, 
Uh, don't forget that it's two of the trays, little trays with the tongs, and then you have your oranges. We'll come down here, and we have set up the uh, whipped cream. You have your syrup, Hershey's chocolate, butter. You have your strawberry compote, your uh, sugar-free syrup, regular syrup, caramel, and honey on top. You've got to make sure all of your waffle makers are turned on. By clicking this little uh, switch on the left-hand side, you have your uh, spray for the waffle makers, your forks for the waffles. Make sure that your batter is inside the batter machine with the blue cold packs on either side. A uh, little plate with a little uh, cup here for the batter. And then remember over here, uh, we usually do our eggs, uh, two pans of eggs, and then the sausages. So we have it set up with two slotted spoons. So after the tongs, you're gonna have the, the green salt. So with the two spoons, and then we will have the potatoes, the biscuits, and the gravy. So we'll have one slotted spoon and one tong here because remember the gravy, we leave the little plastic spoon on the inside. Over here on the stand, you have your salt, pepper, and uh, ketchup, and Tabasco sauce. Uh, for the bread, we're gonna do one uh, plate here with the tongue. Uh, and then you have your, your bread, of course. Then you have your section set up for the toast and the bagels, your cream cheese, your jelly, your peanut butter, and your uh, butter there. Uh, we have one plate here for the um, hard-boiled eggs with this spoon here. Uh, and so you have your hard-boiled eggs, your cereal station, which we really don't do anything to. We don't touch it. Just make sure that, you know, the area is clean around it. Oatmeal section where we've set up the brown sugar and the raisins uh, with the spoons inside. And then we have our uh, dairy section which is our 2% milk and our yogurts, uh, which we um, didn't have enough to fill up the top shelf. And then over here we have our cold water, which we've iced down, and our juice machine, which we've turned on uh, by clicking these little switches down here. So uh, that's it. That is an hour and two minute long video. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, please speak with your supervisor or anybody that is familiar with setting up breakfast. Thank you for your time, and um, I hope everything works out well for you.